One of the most important jobs of a coach is to be a good communicator, to find ways to explain things to their player, to help them overcome problems and to get the most out of their performance. Now, unless you have a full-time coach that's with you during every practice session and every match, you need to learn to become a good coach for yourself because the way that you talk to yourself, the language that you use can either help you improve or it can prevent you from improving. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna be talking about important language patterns and the difference between positive and negative language. We're gonna talk about it in the context of making improvements on the practice court and then making improvements in kind of practice matches and then matches. When you're trying to improve your technique, you have to focus on a particular part of your technique and you have to give yourself coaching points around the thing that you're working on. And when you do that, there are two different ways that you can talk to yourself. You can give yourself a positive coaching point or you can give yourself a negative coaching point. And it is always better because of the way the brain functions to give yourself a positive coaching point. So I'll explain what I mean with three very common examples and I'll do them in order. So one of the big problems that a lot of players run into is they're the wrong distance from the ball. They don't set up the right distance from the ball. Often players get too close and when they're too close they can't reach out and use optimal biomechanics. Now there's two ways that I can give myself a coaching point around this. I can say Richard don't get too close to the ball. Okay stop getting too close to the ball. You're getting too close to the ball. Or I can say okay Richard I want you to stay further away from the ball. I want you to have greater distance between you and the ball. If I'm saying don't get too close that's a negative way to explain it. If I'm saying keep your distance that's a positive way of trying to explain it. If I use the negative variation, okay, Richard, don't get too close, you keep getting too close, I'm saying close over and over again. My brain actually has to process close. That's the instruction that I'm giving myself. So I'm much less likely to get the desired result because I've got to think about close and then I've got to think about not getting too close. If I just give myself the other instruction, okay, Richard, stay further away from the ball. Now that's an active thing that I can work on doing. I can work on staying further away from the ball. I can work on having greater distance from the ball. The next example that we've got is gonna be timing, meeting the ball out in front of the body. We know that we want to meet the ball out in front of the body. There's two ways to explain that to ourselves. I could say, Richard, stop hitting the ball late. You suck, you're a terrible human. You keep on hitting the ball late. Stop hitting the ball late. I'm saying it over and over again, late, 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 late. I'm telling myself to hit it late. What I should do instead is say, okay, Richard, try and meet the ball further out in front of your body. Okay, try and swing a little bit earlier to meet the ball out in front of your body or some positive coaching cue where I'm not repeating a negative thing over and over again. And then the final example that I want to give you is watching the ball onto the strings, keeping your head still through contact. Because what players normally say is, okay, Richard, you suck. Uh, stop lifting your head. You keep lifting your head. You keep taking your eye off the ball. I'm, I'm literally giving myself the instruction of the thing that I don't want to happen. Instead, I should go, okay, keep your head still through contact. Watch the ball through contact, some variation of that. And just making that very subtle and simple change to the coaching cues you give yourself can make a dramatic difference in your ability to improve your technique. So next time you're out in court, start to become aware of what you say to yourself. And if it's a negative variation, find a positive way to explain it. In addition to giving yourself positive coaching cues, you need to start to be more positive in general about your play. It's just a much more effective way to communicate with yourself. And there's been a lot of research done into this. People don't like having negative things said about them or to them. And you can just think about this, you know, with everyday life. If the only time that someone talks to you, they're just saying horrible stuff to you, you're much less likely to listen to them. It doesn't create a kind of positive environment and interaction. And it's exactly the same with the way that you communicate with yourself. Start to become aware of the language that you use on court and start to celebrate small wins and praise yourself for the good things you do instead of berating yourself with the bad, for the bad things you do. You can't pretend that you make mistakes, but the way that you approach them can drastically change the outcome. And I wanna give you kind of a classical example that I see from a lot of competitive players. 
you know, it's very common for a player to have played a fantastic point, you know, six, seven, eight stroke rally, good quality high level tennis. They're moving their opponent round court. They're, they've dragged their opponent wide off the court. They get a short forehand and they miss. They hit the top of the net or they, you know, they send it six inches out or six inches wide. You know, they really should have won the point, but they missed. Now there's two ways that we can look at this. It can be, oh Richard, you absolutely suck. How can you possibly miss such a stupid, easy ball? You're an idiot. Or I can go, cool, I'm playing with the right attitude here. I've just structured this point really well. I've created an opportunity and I narrowly missed that opportunity. Okay, think, why did you miss that ball? Okay, you just didn't quite use the right footwork and you kind of lost focus a little bit. So then after that, I can now give myself kind of a, a positive coaching point and thing to think about. Okay, next time you get in that situation, really make sure to, to, to use adjustment steps to set up in the right position and that's gonna help you execute it. The first variation where I beat myself up for being a useless piece of bleep is not gonna help me to improve. It's gonna make me feel bad about myself. The second variation, I've, I've acknowledged my mistake because obviously I missed the ball that I'm expecting to make, but there was a reason why. Seven shots were fantastic. One small mistake, you know, 85% was fantastic. Just 10, 15% weren't as good. Let's focus on the, the higher percentage, the bigger amount, and let's, okay, right, small mistake this time or next time, make this adjustment. And again, by making this small change in the way that you communicate with yourself, it is gonna make a drastic difference in how quickly you can improve and also your enjoyment for the way that you play tennis. Okay, so a very simple concept and language pattern, but it can make a huge difference in terms of your performance. When it comes to practice, there are a lot of other considerations though, which is why I created a number of different videos to kind of explain the different aspects of practice that are gonna be important for helping you to improve. I have placed them into a playlist and there is a link to that playlist in the description because improving the quality of your practice is one of the most important things you can do to become a better player. The other thing you can do to really become a better player is improve your underlying skill, your eye to hand, your eye to foot coordination because there's a skill requirement to everything that happens in tennis. If you wanna play 4-0 tennis, then you need to have 4-0 eye to hand coordination but that level of coordination won't let you play 5-0 tennis or more advanced tennis. That's not the way it works. You have to get your body functioning in a better way to be able to play higher levels. And that's really the big thing that I help tennis players with using brain-based training. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I've created a master class that's gonna go into a lot more detail and explain how it works. I'll place a link up there so you can check it out and I'll place a link down in the description so you can check it out. And if you sign up for the free master class, it's gonna tell you a little bit about how my program works and that kind of things as well. And the next steps that are involved if you would potentially like to join. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you're gonna implement this stuff, start to be more positive all around. It will make a real difference. And of course, remember to check out the other practice resources.